now. More of Putin's Arkansas football with high school highlights brought to you by Arkansas Farm Bureau. Magnet Cove won an obviously weak 5AA South Conference Championship this year, and Friday night the Panthers were brave enough to ask, who's next? Carlisle answered that question in a hurry. Big Griffin Gallagher, he goes in from seven yards out to make it seven to nothing. Gallagher would run over Magnet Cove for 120 yards on the night. A little later, Carlisle put together a 70-yard drive with Jason Wilson throwing this 30-yard pass to Blade Ebbs for the touchdown. That made it 16 to nothing, and there was still seven minutes to go in the half. A little later, Magna Coves Jay Rogers fumbles, and Jerry Collins recovers for the Bison, and Carlisle advances to play at Mineral Springs this week. Final score, Carlisle cruises by Magnet Cove. 23 to nothing. Last season's Cinderella team in AA football was the Hector Wildcats. This year, the biggest surprise, the Cedarville Pirates. And Friday night, the two teams met in the River Valley. And you got to love this guy. It's fullback Daniel Casto, a Hooton's Arkansas football Sonic super teamer, running 18 yards for the early Hector lead. A little later, Zach Watson fakes the handoff to Casto. He makes it all the way down inside the 20. Then Hector goes back to Casto, and it's another Wildcat touchdown, and Hector's up 14 to nothing, and the Wildcats go on to win this one. This week, the defending state runner-up, Hector Wildcats, will travel to Mighty Barton. Oh, baby. Final score from 29, Hector 34, Cedarville 0. Hector beat Harding Academy in the playoff semifinals last season. Harding would love to make it back to at least the Final Four this year. But on Friday night, first things first, Harding had to beat Mayflower, a team it had lost to by three points the fifth week of the season. And the rematch for revenge went just the way the Wildcats wanted. Harding Academy's record-breaking passer Mark Watson came out running. Watson and the Wildcats ran the ball in the first five plays of the game. Mayflower must have been in shock but the Wildcats would go to the air for the touchdown with Watson going to Luke Anderson for a six-yard TD and a two-point conversion pass made it eight to nothing early. Harding's defense frustrated Mayflower much of the night. Eagle quarterback Brent Brainerd has no time and nowhere to go. J.O. Norman looks kind of like a steer wrestler. He ties up Brainerd, throws his hand in the air, and Harding Academy comes right back with Watson throwing to Reed Smith for the touchdown. Then Watson throws to Anderson again for the two-point conversion, and it was 28 to nothing, and the Wildcats go on to get their sweet revenge. Final score, Harding Academy 49, Mayflower 30. You got nine victories behind you. How you got those nine victories, that's what, that's what a lot of people are asking. They don't understand it. Every team that you play, every team, week in and week out that you play, is bigger than you are, aren't they? They're usually faster than we are. <coughs> How do we win those ball games? We play them with a 130 pound offensive tackle. We have a linebacker that weighs 145 pounds. We have two exchange students that never put pads on in their lives before. And we won nine football games. We won football games on sheer will and determination because you won it worse than anybody else does. That's how you won nine football games with a 130-pound tackle, 145-pound linebacker. Nobody runs a 4-6 on this football team, but we get after it when we go after it together, don't we? That's smack over head coach John Rich. He is proud of the Buckaroos for winning nine games. Friday night, smack over would try to make it a 10-win season against the Mean Green Mineral Springs Hornets. Early on, smack over sophomore quarterback Jonathan Modica finds some success running the ball, but on third and long, Modica gets his pass intercepted by Mineral's sophomore linebacker, Jarvis Junell. And the Hornets would try to run on the Buckaroos, too. But senior tailback Harold Johnson doesn't find a whole lot of room. For the most part, this was a defensive struggle. Mineral would have to punt it back to smack over. And the Buckaroos send Danny Counter around the end. It looks like he has some room to run. But what a great play by Kevin Irwin to make the tackle. Look at it again. Irwin sheds the tackler and stops Counter from what could have been a pretty good game. A little later on third and 16, Smackover tests the air again, and Modica finds senior split in Lamar Howard for a 17-yard pickup, just enough for the first down. 
but Mineral Springs' defense would force Mack over back into another third and long situation just a few plays later, and Michael Olden picks off the pass this time, stopping the Buckaroo drive at the 10-yard line. As Mineral Springs advances to play Carlisle next week, final score, Mineral Springs 14, the Smack over Buckaroos 0. Well, the Mineral Springs Hornets are looking good headed into week three of the playoffs, but the number one team in our state is still shallow Christian. The Saints are ranked number one. They've been there all year long, as has Hector at number two. Junction City is 11-0 at number three. This week, Shallow travels to Junction City. Harding Academy is number four. Then it's Charleston, Barton, Mineral Springs, Carlisle, March Tree, and Mayflower finishes the year with a 9-3 record. The second 10 starts with Ryzen. Then it's Smackover. Desarc drops to number 13. Last week, the Eagles were the only higher-ranked team to lose as March Tree rolled over Desarc. Magnet Cove is number 14, then it's Cedarville, Mansfield, Foreman, Gurdon, Clarendon, and Elkins rounds out the top 20. Last week, Hooton's Arkansas football correctly predicted every winner in the Class 2A playoffs, and again, number 12, Mark Tree, was the only team to beat a higher-ranked opponent. They ripped the Eagles 42 to nothing. This week, Mark Tree is in Searcy for a battle with the Harding Academy Wildcats. All the games in the AA playoffs this week are dandies. Hector will be at Barton, and Carlisle is at Mineral Springs. Coming up next, highlights from Friday night's games between Class 3A teams. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football with high school highlights. Brought to you by First Security Bank Corp. Guys, I'm proud of every one of you. We've come a long way. We're the best team going out on the football field tonight. We came to Little Rock the first time this year. This is the first trip into Little Rock. We leave here, let's leave here celebrating. You understand that? Yes, sir! Star City coach Happy Grayson has led the Bulldogs back to the playoff quarterfinals this year. In the first round, Star City scored 48 points against Pocahontas. Friday night, the Bulldogs would outscore Pulaski Academy in a wild one. Star City quarterback Jeff Renault has accounted for close to 3,000 yards offense this year, but he only needs one yard right here to put Star City up 7 to nothing early over Pulaski Academy. The Bruins' senior quarterback, Isaac Smith, had never played quarterback before this season, but he has passed for more than 2,000 yards this year. P.J. Hickey has been one of Smith's favorite receivers. P.J. finished the year with more than 1,500 yards receiving. But after this catch by Hickey, Star City's Furneaux and Justin Mills would cause the fumble. Furneaux recovers, and Star City built a 21-0 lead. The Pulaski Academy rallied to send the game into overtime. Star City would win it, though, with Furneaux throwing a touchdown pass Pass to Ryan Morgan for the win. Final score in overtime. Star City 29, Pulaski Academy 21. Warren was at Boonville Friday night for a showdown between two of the state's top scoring offenses. But this one was all Boonville. The Bearcats' dominating running attack overshadowed Warren's passing game. Boonville led 21 to nothing in a hurry, and Brandon Rowan added to the lead with this 60-yard run. Brandon would finish with 238 yards and three touchdowns of the night. Boonville's Allen Gator Ray carried 31 times for 168 yards, and he had a big second quarter. This touchdown and extra point by Gator Ray made it 35 to nothing early in the second quarter. Warren quarterback Josh McCain completed 15 of 36 passes on the night. This one to sophomore Kerry Weaver is a good game for the Lumberjacks, but McCain has to pass over Boonville's rush on the next play, and the Bearcats' Brad West intercepts. Then Boonville goes back to work with Rowan around the end. He gets a good block downfield from West and goes 53 yards before Warren's Michael Lynch brings him down at the two-yard line. Two plays later, it's Gator Ray again. That made it 42 to nothing with six minutes left in the half. Next week, Boonville plays host to Star City. Final score from Friday night, Bearcats 59, Warren 6. Prescott, the surprise winner of the 7 AAA Conference, led Lono 22-7 at halftime Friday night, and the Curly Wolves seem to be playing their best football at the right time. On the second play of the second half, junior quarterback Josh Bullock scampers 61 yards down the left side for the touchdown. 
That made it 28 to seven. Lone Oak wouldn't quit though. The Jackrabbits would march 70 yards to score. On a critical third and five, it's quarterback Zachy Wadu throwing to EJ Jones for a 12 yard gain and the first down. A few plays later, senior Raymond Hatton picks up 10 yards on this run. And on the next play, it's Wilbert Wilkerson around the left end for a 20 yard pickup. Wilbert led the Wabbits with 78 yards on 11 carries. Two plays later, Wadu runs it in from 17 yards out, and then Lance Bradshaw runs in for the two-point conversion that cut the lead to 13, but Prescott comes right back with Bullock. He threw for 127 yards on the night. This one's 19 yards to Andrew Fellows for the game's final score. Lono tried everything to catch the Curly Wolves, even the guard-around play in the fourth quarter. Watch number 55, that's junior Broderick Moore, and Big Broderick's got the ball, and a Lono first down, too, but it wasn't enough. As Prescott advances, the Curly Wolves play host to hard-hitting Mariana this week. Final score from Friday night, Prescott 34, Lone Oak 15. Where the offensive line had to really block the balls tonight because uh, the um, Lone Oaks, they, off, they down linemen, they blocked the ball real hard. So we had to get up on them and push them off the ball. There are three unbeaten teams in Class 3A, McGee, Boonville, and Highland in that order in Hooton's Arkansas football poll. Then it's Nashville and Star City. The Bulldogs may be one of the top four teams, but will likely never get a chance to show it. This week, Star City must play at McGee. Prescott is number six. The Curly Wolves just keep on coming. Then it's Brinkley, Mariana, which will be at Prescott this Friday. Green Forest finishes the year at number nine with a 10-2 record. Ozark finishes the year 8-4. The second 10 starts with Rivercrest, then it's Prairie Grove and Pulaski Academy, followed by Clarksville. All four of those teams are 9-3. Lone Oak finished the year 7-5. Warren finished the year with a 500 record, 6-6 six six on the season. Then it's the Queen, Truman, Gosnell, and the Fordyce Redbugs round out the top 20. The Greenwood Bulldogs are headed back to the playoff semifinals. Friday night, Greenwood led Watson Chapel 12 to nothing midway through the third quarter when Chapel's defense steps up. This is senior William Hill sacking Anthony Hancock. But Hancock comes right back on the next play for Greenwood. He tosses to Josh Bell, and Bell works his way close to the first down before David Henderson makes the stop for Chapel. Greenwood would have to punt, and Chapel finally gets some offense with the big play from Keith Scott. He's going in for the score, but this one is coming back. Chapel is called for the clip, and it costs the Cats six. On the next play, Chapel tries to make up for it, going to the air with Brandon Clark passing over the middle of the hall. And he gets down to the 16 before Bobby Hash brings him down for Greenwood. Then it's Marquise Barnes up the middle for tough yards, and Jeremy Hayes gets it down inside the five-yard line. But on the next play, it's disaster for Chapel. Clark and Hayes botch the exchange on the handoff, and Dustin Fry recovers the fumble on the two-yard line. Watson Chapel just committed too many turnovers. Five turnovers on the night. The backbreaker was this interception by Danny Oates with four minutes left. Danny returns the pick 74 yards for a touchdown, and that set the final margin as Greenwood advances to the semis. Final score, Greenwood 26, Watson Chapel 7.
Hooton's Arkansas football correctly predicted every winner in Class 4A this past Friday. Here's our top 20 poll. The win Yellow Jackets are number one. Then it's Harrison. There's the Alma Airedales with an 8-4 record at number three in the semifinals again. Greenwood is number four. Then it's Osceola, Newport, Watson Chapel, Arkadelphia, Lake Hamilton, and Searcy. The second 10 is just like last week with Stuttgart, Whitehall, West Helena, Magnolia, and Batesville. Then it's Hope, Moralton, Ashdown, Monticello, and the CrossFit Eagles will finish the year at number 20. Now that's a look at the Class 4A poll from Hooton's Arkansas football. Of course, the four teams left are all that really matters now as we're down to the semifinals in 4A and 5A as well. We'll show you how the teams from Class 5A advanced. Coming up next, we've got highlights of every 5A playoff game from Friday night straight ahead on Hooton's Arkansas football. And welcome back to Hooton's Arkansas Football and to War Memorial Stadium. I'm Chad Hooton, and it's time for a look at the Class 5A from Friday night, the quarterfinals. And we begin our playoff coverage in Bryant on Friday night, where the number one Hornets played host to the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies. The defenses dominated the first two quarters in Saline County Friday night. Look at the Hornets swarm Northside's Jawan Parker. Patrick Defoy leads the tackle, and then he gets help from Shea Wrench and Philip Prim. Bryant would take over, but the Grizzlies wouldn't get it right back as Northside's Aaron McGrew comes up with the interception off the tipped pass. Northside would drive to scoring position, but Michael Wallace would fumble after a big stick by Bryant's Justin Stevens. But the visitors would get the ball back and drive to scoring position again with Burley fullback Reggie Arter plowing ahead on the drive. But on fourth and goal at the four, Mario Franco misses the field goal just wide right. Then Bryant would drive 63 yards to the north side 17 before quarterback Jarek McCoy gets picked off for a second time. North side's Sharif Shabazz comes down with the pick. Bryant had one more chance in the first half with under 30 seconds left before the break, but Josh Alt narrowly misses the field goal and the Grizzlies and the Hornets were scoreless at halftime. But Coach Derry Marshall and the Grizzlies would dominate much of the second half with their size and speed. The Grizzlies' first drive of the third quarter was a time-consuming march. It's big fullback Reggie Arter again. He weighs 220 pounds, and he's just a sophomore. He did much of the work. Reggie pounded away at Bryant's defense all night, carrying 28 times for 137 yards. But Bryant would eventually stop Reggie and the Northside drive on this fourth-and-one play. Northside stuffed Bryant's first series of the second half, too, and when Alt lined up to punt for the Hornets, Northside Sean Connolly came flying from the left end to block Alt's punt, and Sharif Shabazz is there to pick it up. He races down the sidelines all the way to the Bryant 19-yard line. Conley was virtually untouched on his rush from the left end, and his block would set up the game's first score. Northside ran it up the middle on the first down. Then quarterback Keith Turnip seed rolls left and finds Jawan Parker with a nine-yard touchdown pass. Parker was playing with a broken hand and was part of a beaten up north side backfield Friday night. Two other Grizzly running backs were slowed with sprained ankles. Franco kicked the extra point. North side led 7-0 with three minutes left in the third quarter. On the ensuing kickoff, John Jamison gives good effort on the return, but Bryant was penalized for clipping on the Hornets are forced to start at their own six-yard line. That's where McCoy gets popped by Wayman Casey just as he tries to pitch. Matt White can't handle the pitch, and Northside's Sharif Shabazz recovers in the end zone. It's two big plays in a row for the Grizzlies to make it 14 to nothing. Bryant tried to rally, but Northside's secondary was ready all night. Shabazz intercepts this pass. A little later, when Bryant would move into scoring position, it's Northside's Leonard Williams coming up with the pick at the goal line. Bryant could do nothing offensively in the second half but throw interceptions. The Grizzlies picked off McCoy six times. Northside's defense was indeed the best Bryant had seen all season, and the Grizzlies burst Bryant's bubble. Final score, Fort Smith Northside 14, Bryant 0. They got a good football team, but we got a good football team. You guys demonstrated last week we got to get better each week when you're in playoffs you got to improve if you make a mistake in the ball game you got to take advantage of it make up for it play heads up man play heads up offensive line men hey you had a great game last week you had a great game you know why because you fired off the football and you kept your feet moving you act like you knew who you wanted to block Regardless of whether it's the right man or the wrong man, go block somebody and block them till the whistle blows. Gerald Williams has been the head coach at Springdale for 35 years, and he's won four state titles up there. The Bulldogs are trying to make it back to Little Rock for the first time since 1991. 
And on Friday night, two-time defending state runner-up Cabot crawled over the mountain to battle the Bulldogs. And on the first play of the game, Springdale's quarterback Will Hunt gets sacked by Cabot's Jeff Brennan and Michael Sowell. Springdale would go three and out on its first possession and punt to Cabot. On the Panthers' second play, fullback Marquise Warren finds some room to run right up the middle. On the next play, it's Warren again. He would rush for 52 yards in the first half. Two plays later, Cabot's junior quarterback Aaron Peoples mishandles the snap and Springdale's Mike Fears recovers. But the Bulldogs could do little with it. Sal, Stephen Owen, Nick Fitzgerald, and John Baker gang up on Springdale's Brett Hobbs for no gain here, and it's three and out again for Springdale. Cabot would stick to its knitting. That means running the fullback. But on fourth and two at midfield, Brooks Muller offers Warren this welcome to Washington County. Hello, Springdale's defense may be the best in the state. But Cabot's junior quarterback is tough. He comes right back on this play, rolls right, fires to classmate Glenn Willard for a nice gain. Three plays later, Peoples finds Willard again, this time in the middle, and Willard takes it across into Springdale territory. But Warren would kill the drive with this fumble at the 16-yard line. Springdale's Grant Emerson comes up with the fumble, and the Bulldogs would go on to shut out Cabot, limiting Warren to just 12 yards in the second half. Final score, Springdale 17, Cabot nada. El Dorado finished as runner-ups in the 5A South to Bryant, but both teams will be home for the holidays this year. El Dorado was sent back south for the second consecutive season by J.A. Fair on Friday night. The War Eagles stuffed El Dorado's offense all night. Big Jason Johnson, who is committed to play for the Razorbacks, made many monster hits. This one was on El Dorado's second play. Through three quarters, El Dorado totaled just 52 yards offense on Fair's D. Fair's offense moved the ball some, but struggled with turnovers. Damian Ashford rushed for 203 yards, but he calls it up right here. The War Eagles laid the ball on the ground eight times. They lost three of those fumbles and had an interception. In the third quarter, this fumble by Ashford in the end zone was El Dorado's only touchdown of the night. Sophomore Anthony Jones recovered for the Wildcats, and that tied the score at seven. But Fair is on a roll again. The War Eagles expect to win every week, and in fact, in its past 26 games, Fair has lost just twice, and both losses were by one point. And there will be no team from the South in the semis this year. Final score in overtime, Fair 13, El Dorado 10. Little Rock Central was at Fayetteville Friday night, trying to get past the second round of the playoffs for the first time in a long time. Fayetteville led 17 to nothing at halftime, but facing third and 30 on its first possession of the second half, Fayetteville quarterback Cody Clark is pressured by Central's Brian Williams, and the ball comes loose. John Goss jumps on it for the Tigers, and Central is in business at the 19. Great field position for Central to start a rally, but Bernie Cox's team couldn't make anything happen, and Antero Rodriguez's field goal was no good. Fayetteville came back with Clark finding John Davis on the sidelines, and John runs all the way down to the four before Central's Brandon Campbell can bring him down. Then Sae Arthur Osagi would score his third touchdown of the night to make it 24 to nothing with 48 seconds left in the third quarter. Then Fayetteville kind of fell asleep for a few minutes. On the ensuing kickoff, Central's Dedrick Poole just keeps making tacklers miss him and gets all the way down to the Fayetteville 40 before he's finally stopped. Now, watch this play. It's the fourth play of the fourth quarter. Sophomore quarterback Josh Sullivan, who replaced Derek Mason in the second half, throws to Dedrick Poole, and Poole will not be denied. He scores Central's first touchdown of the night, and the Tigers added a two-point conversion to make it 24-8. A little later, Sullivan finds Keith Williams behind the secondary for another score. That made it 24-14, and Fayetteville still looks to be in a little funk. On a third down play, the Purple Dogs would fumble it back when Clark gets hit by Central's Darrell Parker, and Matthew Atobi recovers for the Tigers. Then on Central's first play, Sullivan finds Mason, who is playing receiver now, in the end zone. The Tigers miss the extra point, but it's a four-point lead with 3.39 left. That's when Fayetteville finally decided it was time to put the game away, and the Purple Dogs were able to run out the clock. This game was not as close as the final score. Fayetteville, 24, Little Rock Central, 20. We got 24 points ahead. We kind of started cruising too much. We, we let Solo's opportunity slip by that we talked about. The thing is, you know, I've encouraged about is when it came time to win a football game, we did it. That's right. That's right. That's all that matters. 
man. That's all that matters. When it came time, we did what we had to do to win a football game. <coughs> <coughs> Got to go back to Fort Smith next week. show everybody that we belong in the uh, state playoff. You know, we just try to come out and play hard, do what we've been doing all year. That's all. There are three teams from the 5A West in the semifinals. Northside, Springdale, and Fayetteville. Northside plays Fayetteville this Friday. The Grizzlies won that conference matchup earlier this year. Springdale is at home playing Little Rock Fair this week. Both of those teams are 10 and 2. Brian had a sensational season, accomplished every goal. The Hornets wanted to make the playoffs, win a conference championship, beat Benton, and win a playoff game. They did all of those things, and as long as Daryl Patton's the coach, Bryant will be in the hunt every year. Little Rock Central is number six, then it's Cabot, El Dorado, Sylvan Hills, and Jacksonville at number 10. The second 10 looks just like it did last week. Pine Bluff, Van Buren, Conway, Jonesboro, and Texarkana. Russell will finish the year four and six at number 16. Then it's Rogers, North Little Rock, West Memphis, and the Bible Chickasaws at number 20. Now coming up next week on Hooton's Arkansas Football, we will be back on the air at one o'clock here on Channel 4, one o'clock next Sunday. And we will have highlights from the Razorbacks and the LSU. Also, all the playoff games. And here's a look at the games that Hooton's Arkansas football plans to cover this coming Friday night. We will be in Fort Smith for the rematch between the Grizzlies and Fayetteville. Northside won that game earlier this year, but it was tight. Also, Hooton's Arkansas football cameras will be in Boonville for the Bulldogs and the Bearcats. Plus, we'll check out Carlisle at Mineral Springs. Hooton's Arkansas football cameras will also be in Searcy for March 3 against the Harding Academy Wildcats. Plus, we'll make a trip down to Gurdon and to Preston. Hooton's Arkansas football brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. Regions Bank, a lifetime of financial solutions. Sitco, you know me. North Point Ford, North Point Lincoln Mercury, and the North Point Used Car Superstore. Sissy's Log Cabin, because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. First Baptist Church of Springdale, a church for all people. Prestige Toyota, buy anywhere else and you'll pay too much. First Security Bank Corp, innovative community bank. And by Arkansas Farm Bureau, come grow with us. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football today. We hope you're here next Sunday at 1 o'clock. Next Sunday at 1, we'll be back with highlights from the Hogs and LSU, plus all the high school football playoff games, the semifinals in 4A and 5A, and the quarterfinals in the AAA and the AA. We'll have highlights of all of those games and more next Sunday at 1 o'clock here on Channel 4. We hope to see you back here for Hooton's Arkansas Football.